94 Geo Metro. We're working to put the uh, Kubota in. It burns a little bit of oil. When I first got it, I mean, I only paid 200 bucks for the car, but first got it and it's burning oil. So I did a in frame, re ring, new bearings, and everything. And didn't realize till I was uh, torquing the rod caps in and happened to look down in the cylinder that they were horribly out around the rings pretty much weren't even touching at the bottom and you can see that little dark spot there on the bumper is from the uh, all the oil that it's burning for every eight gallons of fuel it burns it burns a quart to a quart and a half of oil and it's yeah you can see the oil markets coming out so bad so I'm gonna be putting the Kubota D1105 in it and hoping for a large improvement in mileage. Since I'm planning to put the uh, Kubota in a Geo Metro, I picked up a Geo Metro engine and transmission. It's all of it right there. It's a nice cute little guy. We we're actually able to just lift it out with two people so it doesn't weigh a whole lot i mean the geo engine's all aluminum i'm going to pop the uh transmission off to see so we can see to start making a plate to hook it up to the kubota and see how the clutch fits if it fits on the flywheel that's on the kubota and kind of go from there and see what else we're going to figure out the geo metro flywheel is all chucked up in the lathe I just gotta try and open this up enough to fit over the Kubota crank snout, we'll call it. Oh, quite nicely. Alright, just gotta check my measurement. Fit in, and you keep going. It's off by about four millimeters. To get the Geo Metro transmission onto the Kubota engine, it already has a quarter inch thick plate on the back of the engine. It's got the Geo Metro flywheel on it. Now I've got it set on this quarter inch plate because with that flywheel on it, and then you hold the transmission in there and check depth, it needs to be an inch off the back or a half an inch off the back of the block. So I've got another quarter inch steel plate here. I'm going to cut it out. To the shape of the bell housing for the metro and then I'll cut out the inside where it goes around the bolts for that plate and I'll basically just bolt that plate to the transmission and then with the uh, input shaft in the pilot bearing hold the plate up or clamp the plate into where it's flush and then once you find a good spot, go ahead and just uh, 
put a couple tack welds on and take it off, weld it all the way, and then should be pretty well set with that. So I'm just gonna trace this out and cut it out. And then took the extended oil filter housing off the engine. I'm gonna just put it straight on there and took my old GeoMetro alternator and kind of roughed in where it's gonna go and figured it out and basically it pretty much just straddles right over the old bracket. We're just gonna need to add, you know, a little spacer here, maybe another one in the front once we actually get the pulley on it to make sure they're aligned. Because we took the um, pulley off of this one because it's a ribbed pulley, serpentine style, and these other pulleys are V-belt. So I had an old Chevy alternator around. Bam. Took the V-belt pulley off of it. It goes over the shaft at the right diameter, but we need to uh, machine it so it sits back in here right. So, this is the pulley off the Geo Metro. Got bent a little bit pulling it off, but it doesn't matter because we don't need it. Alternator. This is the one off the Chevy alternator. Now, if you look at the backs, you can kind of see this one's flat and that one dips in. This lip is too big around to go into the nose of the alternator, and then it's not cut back in deep enough. And on this side, we're probably going to have to cut it in too, so that there's, you know, be able to actually put the nut on and tighten it down. So we're going to chuck it up in the lathe and make this look like that. All right, got the pulley all machined down. Um, I actually ended up kind of doing it twice. I had this one off of a Chevy alternator that was pretty solid and was about the same diameter as the GeoMetro one, so I wanted to use it. And apparently in cutting it to try and get the back to match how this was, it got just a little too deep and it, well, you can see what happened, it came off. So I went to another Chevy alternator I had the one I didn't use in the first place because, well, it was stamped steel, so I was like, I can't machine that. And then after taking it off the alternator and looking at it, it actually worked better because I didn't have to machine any of this back itself out. I just had to machine that center down small enough to go in. And, well, this front was a little weird, so I smoothed it out and to match the depth of this one for the nut. But that was pretty easy. And then, yeah, just... Ran that down, and now we'll go for a little walk over here. Got a nice little shop helper making everything nice and clean. Doing a good job. She goes right on. Spins just fine. So now I just got to work on shimming up the alternator or spacers and stuff to get it square and the belt all nice and there we go. Now it's on all the way. You know, get the pulleys all lined up, and that part will be done. One step closer. Cut this little section of the plate out because of where the starter goes on the transmission for the Metro is it sits like right in here. So get that piece of plate out of the way. So I'm just going to clean up the slag on that. I'll clean up the slag on the other plate and then drill the holes out for the bolts and then we'll set her all together and get it close enough. It's a rough idea. Once I get this set permanently, I'm probably going to go ahead and cut the excess off the bottom of this plate so that you can actually use the inspection cover on the transmission. That's why it's cut off short here, because on the Metro from here down, it's just a thin tin inspection cover. 
so trying to hold it up there and measure apparently uh, my measurements off a little bit so the quarter inch plate isn't quite thick enough like it's it's tight up here at the top but there's a gap down at the bottom so I was suspecting from trying to hold it and measure that I might have needed a 3 8 plate but I don't have any 3 8 so I'm gonna cut one out of the eighth so far today what we got done here's we got the uh, alternator mounted and pulleys lined up <clears throat> and uh, modified the old adjustment off of the Geo Metro engine to where it would work on this one haven't painted anything yet so it's kind of ugly looking but it's on there <clears throat> well I had the plasma cutter here went ahead and cut out some quarter inch and the flange so I can run the exhaust when we get to that point we've got two bolts loosely holding the Geo Metro transmission onto the engine here that bolt down there is just kind of temporary it's just when I had this the right thread and too long so I got a spacer on it but it's just kind of holding it to it starter tucks up in there nice and pretty it's almost like it was made to go there I uh, got a bolt in there and then the only other two bolts that hold the transmission on are these back two here but because of where they go through at I can't put um, nuts on the back after a little bit of thinking I didn't like the threads just being in that quarter inch of steel bolts are the right length cut the heads off slid them through and then I just welded them from back there and then when I take this off to paint the plate and do some cleanup grinding and everything I'll go ahead and grind around the base of them a little bit here on this side and weld that and then grind it flush so it'll sit right so it's should be well held in there on oh, that bolt I had to sink that in I was hoping to be able to just drill it deeper or with a bigger drill bit to where I could just sink the head in but it was so close to the edge that the drill bit just kept kicking out so I just kind of took the grinder and cut down in there and smoothed it out and then there's a little rib on top of the bolt I had to grind that off so it would sit flush in there but it's nice and flush and tight so that's one of the spots I got to clean up next thing is going to be getting a starter and seeing if I can actually start this thing I was really hoping that uh, once I got the transmission and the starter and everything on I was going to be able to start it even if it had issues, I was hoping I'd be able to start it, but uh, it seems like from pulling the oil filter off and seeing that there was cooling in the oil and then through this plug on the side, when I took the fitting off to put a plug in there, uh, you could see oil in the coolant. I was pretty sure it probably blew a head gasket. I thought even with the head gasket, you know, hopefully it should start and run somewhat, especially with no coolant in it, just to make sure it work. But it's looking like it's not going to start until I replace the head gasket I'll crank it over here and show you put this on the glow plugs So, as you can see, must be a pretty bad blown head gasket or possibly maybe a liner's cracked because it seems like it's puffing more smoke out of the thermostat housing than it is out of the exhaust. But I guess I'm just going to pull the head off and see what we got and hopefully it's just a head gasket. I've already got one on order. If not, then I guess I'll have to get a rebuild kit because supposedly they come with sleeves. These are supposed to be sleeved engines and 
Oh, I'll just have to tear into it and see.